How y'all doing this morning? Hey. I'm sorry if I'm a little excited. You know, it's to God be the glory that I can stand before you this morning. Yes. <laughs> so good morning, good morning, women of hope. And fellas, too. I see my husband back there, Julia's husband. There's a couple of men here. Uh, <laughs> how y'all doing this morning? Yeah. Didn't the choir just bring in the, the atmosphere yeah. of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Are you all fired up and ready to receive a mighty word from God? Yeah. Oh, I don't know what y'all say. Say it again. Are y'all ready and already yeah. fired up? Yeah. Well, I definitely am. And I'm blessed as God was pouring into me, and I'm just ready to share what's in my spirit right now. So if you would, please bow your heads and go to the throne of grace with me. Ooh, Holy Spirit, please help me to pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this hour. I thank you, Lord, for this minute. I thank you for giving me another day to live. I, another day, Lord, to just minister to your people, another day to be full of your glory. I ask that you forgive us all for our sins and that you make us more like you in every aspect of our lives, Lord. Bless this day for your people. I pray that you hide me, Lord, behind the cross. Let you, Lord, be seen in me. Lord, please send your anointing. And it is in your mighty name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, women of hope. This is a retreat. So I will need your full attention, your feedback, and your active participation, okay? okay? Also, I tell you there's nothing better than a good old spiritual retreat, especially when they incorporate brunch. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> you get to feed your soul and you get to feed your tummy, yes? Now, if you can remember, it was this time last year that I was before you virtually and we were sipping on tea. You all remember that? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm back again. Thank you, God. And I give God the glory for that. All right, so since I'm starting off this retreat, I would like to take a moment to charge the atmosphere. The choir did an excellent job, but we're going to bring in the atmosphere again. So the, the word of God says in Matthew 18, 20, that where two or three are gathered together in my name, behold, there I will be in the midst of them. So this is where I'm going to need your participation. So ladies and fellas, the Lord is present here with us today, so let's give God the glory. Let's give God the honor, let's give God the praise, let's give God more than that. I don't know about you, but I have plenty to give God the praise for. God, the fact that I'm able to just stand before you today is more than enough for me to give God praise. And I don't know about you, but he didn't have to do it, but he did. And so I, I come before you, I want to give God the highest praise. I, come on, y'all, give God more than that. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. You can do better than that. He's been better than good. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's been better than good. I thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. And God is enough. His grace is sufficient. Praise your name, Lord. Now, we're good and fired up. You know, I give God the praises, and I can give him the praises all day long. But I also got, came here today to do a job, and that is to speak or reflect. So let's get to it. All right, so please stand with me. And if you have your Bibles, please turn to Proverbs 27, 19. 27, 19, Proverbs 27, 19. And I will be reading from the CSB version. And the word of God reads, as the water reflects the face, so the heart reflects the person. You may be seated. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, yes, you already know I'm going to go with this, right? Yes. <laughs> so reflect. You know, as I was preparing and I was reflecting on this topic, I thought examining the word reflect in its variety of contexts would be beneficial to us understanding multiple ways the word reflect could take our journey today. So here's what I found. First definition, reflection. The throwing back by a body of surface light, heat, or sound without absorbing it, such as the reflection of light. Second definition, reflection. An image seen in a mirror or a shiny surface such as Mary Ann surveyed her reflection in the mirror. Third definition, reflection. A thing that is a consequence of 
or arises from something else, such as a healthy skin is a reflection of good health in general. And last but not least, fourth definition, reflection. Serious thought or consideration, such as, he doesn't get much time for reflection. So as you can see, the word reflect is used in a variety of interesting contexts. Now for today, the Holy Spirit led me to categorize the word reflect and three powerful dynamics. So on your table, there is a piece of paper and a pen where you can take notes. This is where you want to start taking some notes down, okay? <laughs> this is just a retreat, you know? <laughs> All right, so first dynamic is your testimony. Your testimony is a reflection of your life's journey. Okay, your testimony. Dynamic number two, your reflection. Your reflection in the word is reflective of how you're living. Your reflection. All right. Dynamic number three, your promise. How are you reflecting what God's word says about you? All right. So you have your testimony, your reflection, and your promise. We're going to start with the testimony. So let's talk. Your testimony. Now that's your story. That's what makes you unique. That's your testimony that has brought you to where you are right now at this very moment in life. If you didn't look back on your life and reflect, you would miss everything God has done in those years that prepared you for today. Yeah. The seed of what happened to you yesterday is what has made you who you are today. Now, I want you all to just take a moment. I want you to close your eyes. Because remember, this is a retreat, so close your eyes. And I want you to inhale and I want you to exhale. And what you're doing right now is reflecting, okay? Breathe in and breathe out. And I want you to reflect on how far God has brought you. Now, I don't want you to play with this because if it's anything like my journey, oh God. Now think about those places you used to go. Where if people only knew, oh you know the rest. And don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed, okay? Don't be ashamed. All right, this is where you open your eyes. Because right now, this is where you rejoice. All right? You rejoice right now. Rejoice. And you know why you rejoice? And you rejoice rejoicing because where you've been, you now know where not to go. Sadly, I have found so many people ashamed of where they come from. Ashamed of what others would think of them. Ashamed of what they would be talking about. But I tell you. James 5, 16 says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Your prayer of righteousness, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So when we share our testimonies with one another, that is our opportunity to pray for each other. Yeah. When someone reveals an area of weakness to you, stand on the side of righteousness and begin to pray not gossip or judge. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now, there will be opportunities to come your way for you to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. You reflect on your testimony at that point. You reflect, you rejoice, and you share your story. You go out into the world and tell how good God has been to you and how far he has brought you. Your testimony is not one of shame, but one of glory. Amen. So as you take the time to reflect on your testimony, you can then be a guiding light, or should I say a bright reflection of he who brought you through. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let me give you a scenario to make it plain. Picture this. You have a place to be that you've never been before. You hop in your car, you set your GPS on go. Now, while you drive, you're constantly checking your directions to make sure you hit every corner, every turn, so that you arrive on time. Well, we've been there before where the GPS suddenly says, go left, I mean, go right, I mean, no, wait, stop, wait, you've gone too far, right? Yeah, I've been there before. And now you're totally lost and confused, to say the least. Do you know what? Even when you're realizing it, even without you realizing it, you stop and you reflect. You say, okay. Now, I remember making this turn and I remember this landmark. You reflect and you reflect until you say, okay, I remember where I am now. Let me get this GPS together so I can get back on track. You know, our life is much like that. We have a destination set in our head about how life will look for us 
and then we hit some bumps in the road and we get taken off track, but reflection steer us back. Yeah. We regroup and we get back on track and we keep on trucking. Keep on. Raise your hands if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen, amen. So remember, your testimony is your story. And in order to move towards where we want to go, we have to first reflect on where we've been. You cannot improve what you do not reflect on. Right. We reflect because we want to be in good standing, whether it's physical, mental, professional, or relational. We reflect. Amen? Amen. All right, so our next dynamic, who knows what it is? What was it? Did you write it down? Reflection. Reflection, that's right. All right, good, good, good. Now, when it comes to reflection, wait a minute, okay. I'm going to need a volunteer at this point. You in the back. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Let's give her a round of applause and volunteer. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I have two things here with me. I have a mirror. Yes, ma'am. You'll hold that. Okay. I also have a Bible, but we'll get to that in just a second. I need to point the mirror towards you. Yeah, now point that mirror towards you, girl, because this is what I want you to do. All right? <laughs> Honey, I want you to look at yourself in the mirror. Okay. Ain't she fine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, the hair is on point. Her lip gloss is popping. She even got the right coordination of the green and the yellow and the pearls. Beautiful. How you feeling? Feeling you feeling good? How you guys think she looks? Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. All right, so I'm going to take that mirror from you. And now, I'm going to give you this Bible. Yes, ma'am. And I want you to look at the Bible. Look at it like you were looking at the mirror. All right? Now bring it down just a little lower. Like right here where your heart is. Right. Got that? Mm -hmm. All right. Now without answering, let us all ask ourselves this question. Are we reflecting what this great book oh, is saying? Good. Yes. Thank you for volunteering. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause. All right. So I have a mirror and I have a Bible. And both are reflection tools. One gives you the image of a physical being, and the other gives you a guide of a spiritual being. One reflects matters of the physical, and the other reflects the matters of the heart. Now, of the two, the Bible is what our lives should be reflecting. The Bible is full of examples of how we are to love others and to love ourselves. Amen? Our physical image holds no weight if we are not reflecting the ways of the word. Proverbs 31, 30 says, Charm is deceitful, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord should be praised, is to be praised. Amen. Amen. That's where you Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what kind of title we hold, the car we drive, or how much money we make. If our heart is not full of love, we are nothing. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13 says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clinking cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have the faith that can move mountains, and Lord knows I have some faith, but have not love, I am nothing. You see, it's not about the reflection you see in the mirror. It's about the matters of the heart and if you are reflecting Jesus. Yeah. Matthew 5, 14 says that you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Amen. So if we profess to be Christians, then we must be just that, Christ-like. We have to be a reflection of how Christ walked, talked, preached, and treated others. We have to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in all that we do. Galatians 5, 22, 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such there is no law. Nowadays, the world has made it cool to be nasty and ugly, and that's not cool. There are actually, seriously, some people who cannot get behind the wheel of a car without cussing out everyone on the road. Oh, that may be some of y'all in here, so you got some work to do. Now, what would Jesus do? Like Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
And another thing, I see this all the time on social media. Miss Cora knows I'm on that social media. But this is what I see all the time. I'm just going to match energy with energy. Y'all see that? I cannot stand that. No, that is a trick of the devil. The Bible says to love your enemies, to bless those who curse you. Yeah, that's right. You must do it. Now, I'm not saying it's easy, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So there are no excuses and there are no exceptions. So therefore, go ahead and love your neighbor. In fact, guess what, y'all? Participation time. Go ahead and fist bump the person next to you. There you go. Now, I would have said give them a hug, but we still want to be safe. <laughs> See, now, that wasn't so hard, was it? Was that hard? But the true test, let's be honest, the true test is when we get outside of these walls. Because let's be honest, right now we all have our best foot forward. So I'll challenge you, you know I'm going to ask next time I see you, how bright are you reflecting your light in the world? Remember, our spouse, friends, connections are all reflections of us. So if you lose respect, you lose effect. What are you reflecting? So write that down and keep that in your hearts and remember that. What are you reflecting? Let that be in your mind every day that you wake up and every day that you get in this crazy world. Just say, what am I reflecting? I'm supposed to love my enemies no matter how they treat me. I am the light of the world. All right, now for our final dynamic. Who's paying attention? What is it? Your promise, that's right. Oh my God, you guys are doing so good. I'm a teacher, so if I was in school, all y'all would get stars. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so each day and each night, in fact, constantly, we are to meditate on the word of God. And as we meditate, we reflect on the word and what the word says about us. How can anyone tell you anything about you that is contrary to the word of God? That's right, that's right. Right? Let me give you some examples. If I am the head and not the tail, then no one can tell me anything less than I am the head. This is where I need your participation. Because you got to feel this. You got to know what I'm saying. If I am more than a conqueror, then no one can tell me I'm just a conqueror. No, no, honey, I am more than a conqueror. If the word says I shall live and not die, that no doctor on God's green earth can give me a prognosis of death. I don't care what stage they say I may have. You thank you, Jesus. Miracles happen every day. My baby is a miracle. I am a walking, talking miracle. You are looking at a miracle. So you can't tell me what my God can't do. Nobody can tell me that God can't work a miracle. There's people who are dealing with what I am dealing with that can't even get out the bed. So praise the Lord, I came up here running. I don't still run it. So can nobody tell me anything contrary to the word of God, amen? amen. I shall live. Who yeah. bless your name, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As Joel Osteen opens his ministry every morning with his congregation, while holding his Bible, he says these words. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Psalms 1-2 says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. and night. We are to keep the word of God hidden in our hearts, as it will help us to live a life of righteousness. Yeah. We must pick up our word, read our word, meditate, and reflect yes. on what we've read. Then and only then will we be reflective of Jesus and have, as John 1.8 says, good success. Yes. All right. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Sure so when we are having those low days, just reflect on what the promises of his word has said about you. But what it says about you, you stand firm in it and you use your power and your power is the word of God. Now, one of the biggest reflections we are to make is the reflection of Jesus at Calvary. We reflect on how much Jesus loves us. We reflect on how Jesus took the, 
took up the cross and bared our sins so that we would have a right at the tree of life. And if we would believe that Jesus is the living son of God, then we shall dwell with him in heaven. Amen. Now to be saved, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. That is it and that is all, my friends. Now as I leave you, I want you to reflect on all that you heard this morning. You took your notes. So to thy own self be true. If you have something to work on or to perfect, just reflect. Amen. And be the best you you can be. I love you and God bless. Yeah.